This video is sponsored by Audible. That's right, they are back with the amazing deal from last week. Signing up in the link below will give you a free trial month and also a free audiobook. For any book, podcast, news, or comedy lover out there, you definitely do not want to miss out on this offer. Their library is constantly updating, so you will always have something new to pick from, and each month that you are a member, you will get a credit for any book in their collection of over 200,000. So, if you want to support the channel and claim your free book, be sure to check out that link after the video. On April 19, 1941, a farmhouse in Odin, Indiana would be the subject of a mystery that would go on to remain unsolved to this day, nearly eight decades later. The story behind this baffling case goes as follows. On that fateful morning in April, 28 separate fires broke out all around the farmhouse. The fires were as random as they could be. Walls, curtains, books, a calendar, a mattress, and a wooden bowl were just a few of the very random things that seemingly erupted into flames out of nowhere. Over the next 15 hours, 100 firefighters battled the spontaneous fires, with several men waiting in each room of the house for the next fire to break out. And shockingly, over seven fires ignited right in front of their eyes with no rhyme or reason. When the smoke, both literally and figuratively, settled, 28 fires had been recorded and for both the family living in the house, the community as a whole, and the subsequent investigation into the fires would lead into more questions than any concrete answers. Today we are going to look into one of the most bizarre, fascinating, and hottest stories that I have ever come across. This is the still unsolved story of the 28 fires of Odin. The farmhouse that would eventually become the hottest property in the area was owned by the Hackler family, William and his wife Minnie, along with their children, William Jr., Dorothy, Garland, Dale, and Virginia, called the two-story farmhouse home and had done so for over the past 10 years. Being built shortly after the Civil War, it had seen its share of families come through its doors and as well had its past dealings with tragedy, but more on that later. On the morning of April 19th, when William was making his way outside to begin the day's work, he suddenly smelled smoke. Looking back at the house, wondering what it could be, he noticed what looked like flames shooting out from below the second floor window. Running back to the house, he met his wife in the doorway, and she seemingly had no idea there was any type of fire. William and his children rushed upstairs and saw a small fire beneath the window coming from the wall, thinking that the fire was actually inside of the walls themselves. When the fire department arrived, they quickly put out the flames and examined the area, yet they could see no damage or scorch marks in the walls. In fact, they couldn't see any damage to any of the surrounding area. Admitting that it in fact was very weird, but not making a huge deal out of it, the fire department left shortly after. But reports say that the moment they arrived back at the station, they received a call from a very frantic Minnie that another fire had broken out inside the home. As the fire department got back to the farmhouse, they in fact did see another fire, but this time it was on one of the mattresses. After putting out this fire, seemingly suddenly, things started to get very weird. A third fire randomly started, right in front of a firefighter and William. Some of William's clothing began being engulfed in flames, and as they rushed to put it out, two more fires started, one on the opposite end of the house and another inside of a book. Not just the book itself, but actually within the pages. A fireman went on record to say that smoke began pouring from the pages and when he opened it, a small fire was quickly burning each page. More responders showed up to help battle the growing fires, and within three hours, nine more fires had broken out. 
all at various parts throughout the house. Some of the things that had caught fire were a lampshade, rug, part of a chair, and a wooden bowl that was inside of a cupboard with little to no damage to anything around it. By now, over 100 firefighters were at the scene, and with so many, numerous of them were just standing outside of the house, directing those inside of where to go when the next fire started. Another report from one of the firemen went as follows. I was standing in the kitchen looking around for anything that could be smoking when right in front of my eyes, I watched the calendar on the wall begin smoking and almost instantly flames appeared, as if it were magic. During the short downtimes with no fires, the family had begun moving out the beds and some of the furniture outside so they wouldn't catch on fire too, and also because none of the children wanted to step foot back in that house, and honestly, I do not blame them. One of the very last things to ignite was a set of curtains by the window, nearest the front door, and the moment they were put out, the curtains on the opposite end of the house also caught fire. At the same time, another fire broke out upstairs. A paper divider that had been placed under one of the mattresses on the only remaining bed in the house as well began smoking and quickly were followed by flames. This one stood out more than others though, because the heat seemed to be more extreme here as the entire mattress was reduced to ashes in only a matter of a few minutes. This was seemingly the last fire to break out, and after it was extinguished, all those around the farmhouse were struck with fear that nobody could explain how any of this could have happened. Neighbors began to scream that the house was cursed, and even started pointing fingers at the family themselves for causing all of the fires to happen. The Hackler family couldn't even defend themselves as they had absolutely no idea as to how to explain any of this away. Even they thought something evil was at work. Whether it was something paranormal or not, the only thing that seemingly everyone could agree on was that they couldn't give an answer to what caused all of this. In the days after the fires, the Hackler family tried their best to look into what could have possibly caused the farmhouse to be the victim of so many random fires. They were not alone either. A fire marshal as well did his own investigation into the matter. The talks of what had happened spread through the town like wildfire, and many of the residents in the area made their way to the property to see if they could aid in helping the family as well as offering their own theories on what they felt was a good explanation for the fires. Some stated that lightning in the area charged and heated the nails in the home, which then in turn caused the randomness of the fires. Another was that the house was sitting on a powerful magnetic field, and because of its location led to the sporadic fires. Another was that gases from the area had made their way into the house and were to blame as the culprit. And of course, everyone's favorite, that the fires were more related to an angry and vengeful ghost, while others claimed that the house was simply cursed. This now brings me to a point in the story that I briefly mentioned earlier. Being built shortly after the Civil War, it had seen its share of families come through its doors and as well had its past dealings with tragedy, but more on that later. See, I did say that. The farmhouse's first residents were that of the Ketchum family. No, not that Ketchum. Marshall Ketchum built the house himself and he and his wife Margaret and their children lived there for almost 15 years before tragedy struck them. All of their five children would one by one die from typhus. Marshall would die a few years later from what many attributed to a broken heart. His wife followed shortly after. And as morbidly ironic as this may seem, typhus is often nicknamed the burning fever. The second residents of the farmhouse were that of the Wilkie family. Andrew Wilkie, his wife, and their two sons also met with a tragic end. Andrew, who claimed to have been a spiritualist with a dark background, with many shady dealings, had very few friends, and the family was said to typically keep to themselves. One day, while on a hunting trip, one of their sons was accidentally shot and killed, and the death of one of his sons was said to have made Andrew inconsolable, and it is rumored that he grieved himself to death due to this. The son was also said to have been buried on the property, as was Andrew, and the third act of ill intent seemed to be now 
that of the fires. The accusations of the land being cursed had its merit, and I can see why people would say that. It is often easier, in fact, to throw something that you can't explain on the unexplainable, and doing so will give you at least some sense of finality and comfort. Whether it was the family being spooked by the stories from the past, or just not wanting to risk having the fires occur again, they eventually relocated. Not only themselves, but the actual house. They broke it down piece by piece and moved a few miles away. And this is where the Hackler story ends. Yet, there is still barely an answer given as to what caused the fires, and I wanted to do my best to try to find an answer. So, let's break this down. There were a total of 28 fires in the house, in a 15 hour period. Nobody was injured, and no major damage was done to the house. All the fires seemed to be very random, almost as if it were in fact a ghost, going around lighting small fires and moving on to the next thing they could burn. It's impossible to say that if this was a ghost, and for those who don't want that type of cop-out answer, I decided to look into this more scientifically. I came across spontaneous fires, aka spontaneous combustion. I am not going to go into the history of what it is, but for a little lesson, spontaneous combustion is when something has the ability by nature, or depending factors, to self-heat, to the point of actually igniting itself without aid from any type of accelerant, like gas or kerosene. The reason I am bringing this up is I feel this is the only logical theory you can attribute to what happened. So bear with me here and take this in. Not everything has the ability to be considered possible to spontaneously combust or ignite. However, there are a handful of things that can. Some of these are rags and waste with oil or paint residue, towels or linen, paint overspray on types of materials like woods or metals, coal, hay, compost, and cellulose nitrate. Now that last one, cellulose nitrate, is what stands out to me here. I did more digging and found out some very interesting and somewhat incriminating things about it. One of the biggest things being that it is extremely flammable. It's used in numerous things, the most common being in film reels. In fact, if any of you saw Inglorious Bastards, they actually did a small bit about how easily this stuff ignites. But what does that have to do with house fires? because I really don't think the farmhouse doubled as a drive-in movie theater. Why I am mentioning it is because of the other things that cellulose nitrate is used in. Wood lacquers, leather finishes, printing inks, adhesives, and lampshades are just a few to name. So, now let's look at things that we know caught fire randomly. First up is the book. Well, as we know, a book uses printing for its pages, and you would of course need printing ink to display the words. The fire was described as not being on the book, but in the book, in the pages, where the printing ink would be. Another is the lampshade, which is self-explanatory. The curtains, more than likely being made of linen, randomly catching fire as well. The calendar that a firefighter saw ignite right in front of his eyes could also be attributed to using this printing ink because it would have been used in the process of making it. The first fire reported under the window on the wallpaper could be attributed to the wood lacquer that may have been underneath it, on the wood itself which is a common practice to help make the wood smooth and easier to apply wallpaper. Many of the things that were the origin points for the fires all had cellulose nitrate in them, which as we now know is extremely flammable, and in turn has the ability to spontaneously combust. It would explain why no other object around the fires were damaged, why the fires were just so contained to one thing. Well, other than the mattress, but that in and of itself is self-explanatory as to why it caught on fire. It is also important to mention that during the morning of these fires starting, it was reportedly extremely hot, especially for April. There was also a lot of humidity in the air that morning too. Both of these factors can aid in spontaneous combustion. But that is just my theory. I am not going to just sit here and claim that I solved this decades old mystery when I know jack shit about fires. 
and just learned all of this in an hour from a few Google searches. As I said, it's just a theory. If any of you have your own, please voice them down in the comments because I would love to see what all of you think. Who knows, maybe it was a ghost. Maybe it was a cursed house. There was never any mention of any more fires after all, so if it were spontaneous combustion, then why wouldn't it have happened a second or third time? Why didn't it happen sooner, and why wouldn't there have been more reported cases of it happening? I'm sure the Hackler family wasn't the only family in town that owned books or a calendar after all. Or who knows, maybe they were. And they just got them because they had money burning a hole in their pocket. I hope you enjoyed this video. And again, let me know your own theories in the comments because I would love to know what all of you think. Because as much as I like my own theory, I can see a lot of holes in it. I will see all of you in the next video along with a very special guest joining me. In the meantime, hit that subscribe button and tickle that like button while you're at it. Stay safe out there, friends. Good night.